this is one of those occasions where I get a second bite at the, at the apple of the same lesson. I talked on Sunday a lot about Bartimaeus and the, the importance of his response to Jesus when he's asked this really important question, what do you want? I don't want to lose sight of that, but there was another thing in this lesson that was important that I didn't talk about on Sunday, and here I get my second chance. It's in a little tiny throwaway piece of the story that you may not even have registered when you heard it read. And that is, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and went to Jesus. I see someone nodding, like, okay, well, maybe my thunder has already been stolen in somebody's mind, but I'm going to do it anyway. <clears throat> Imagine being Bartimaeus, being poor, being a beggar, being somebody who has almost nothing. Throwing off your cloak is a pretty significant gesture. It is your protection from the weather. It's your protection from people and animals who might otherwise attack you. It's your sleeping bag. It is where in the folds you can hide whatever it is you may have been able to beg for. Throwing it off is throwing away what is essentially your most valuable possession. And then springing up and running away from your place. You may or may not know that many homeless people are reluctant to go inside during bad weather or to receive medical care or for any other purpose because it may mean lo losing the place they have gotten wherever they are staying out in, in outdoors. If you found a really comfortable and, and useful place to be, why would you give it up? If you are a beggar by the side of the road, presumably you have figured out that this is a good place near the gate along the road where you're likely to have people going by you. If you get up and leave it, what's to say somebody else isn't going to come along and take it? If you're blind, you can't see it happening. You can't see somebody steal your cloak. You can't see somebody sit down where you were. You've taken an awfully big risk. And yet that's what Bartimaeus does. He gives up his security. He gives up what little he might have had in the way of possessions. He gave up, gives up what might be a, a, an advantageous place to be in exchange for the hope of what it is that Jesus may do for him. I could sit down and say amen, but you know that's not all there is to it, do you? Because you and I are called to do the same thing. We may not be quite as poor as Bartimaeus. We may, like the man in the other story, have many possessions. And yet we are called day by day as we go through our lives to give up some of that security, to give up some of that certainty, what it is we know we have, however meager it may be, <clears throat> however fleeting and passing away it may be. feels pretty comfortable to us, and yet we're called to set it aside in exchange for what it is that God promises us. The hard part, dear friends, is that sometimes we're called to make that sacrifice, to take that risk before we really see what it is that God will deliver. We have the faith that God will. We don't necessarily know what that prize is going to be when we're asked to do the giving up. So there is a hard lesson hidden in this little story of someone who seems very unlike us. The message is sometimes that giving up will have to come first. Sometimes that giving up will feel like a major sacrifice. And yet, like Bartimaeus, we are called to do it, to spring up and run toward what it is God promises to each one of us knowing that in the end it can only be a prize beyond price. Amen.